Slide 31, welcome to example three. So in example three, we're gonna go backwards. And when I say we're going backwards, this is when I'm just gonna flat out give you the terms in the sequence and ask you to write the explicit formula for the nth term. So now I want us to start hunting for patterns. All right, so take a look at these numbers. We're gonna do parts A and B, but things I, I, would, I would point out, I can see first of all, there's some kind of alternating sequence here because the first term is positive, second term's negative, positive, negative. So I'm just gonna take note that here I have an alternating sequence. And I can't even spell the word, the word alternating. Oh my goodness, I really can't spell tonight. All right, hold on, third time's a charm. Here we go, alternating. Nailed it. All right, this is an alternating sequence. And over here on part B, I take note that each time out, my term is negative. So this is not an alternating sequence. Okay. Now, let's look for patterns, all right? Especially like over here with the fractions. Do we see patterns with 3, 9, 7, excuse me, 3, 9, 27, 81, 2, 43, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20? Do I see patterns with 9, negative 81, 7, 29, negative 65, 61, and so on and so forth? And really what we also want to keep in mind is how do we get the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 to map to these numbers? How do we get the numbers 1, 2, Three, oops, let me get this out of the way. Four and five to map to these numbers. All right, so maybe your spidey senses are going off here. Nine, 81, 729. If you can spot the pattern, great. It really depends on how well you know your powers of nine, right? We know that nine to the first power is nine. Nine squared is 81. 9 cubed is 729. Guess what 9 to the 4th is about to be? 65, 61. So I can start to see how I can map 1, 2, 3, 4 to these numbers because these numbers are all powers of 9. Powers of 9, which means I need my n up in the exponent. So for a sub n, I know I'm gonna have at least a nine to the n term in there. But I also need an alternator. I'm gonna give myself some space here. So I have an alternator times nine to the n. And what I have to decide is, do I want an n here or do I want an n plus one? Those are usually the two options you pick between. You could go n and n minus one, but we'll go n n plus one. So let's just take a look and see if n works. All right, if we were to go with n, let's test this out. What would a sub one give me? This would be negative one to the one times nine to the one, and that would be negative one times nine, which is negative nine, and that does not work because my lead term is not negative. So let's change this to plus one, all right? So let me erase this and get this in here. So this would be negative one to the n plus one, all right, if I had n plus one here, this would be one plus one, right? That would become negative one squared, which would be positive one, and one times nine would be positive nine. So that is working. Let's test it out with a sub two. This would be negative one to the n plus one times nine to the n, right? n plus one, nine to the n, two plus one, nine squared. Well, this is negative one cubed, which is negative one. Nine squared is 81 negative 81, and this is all checking out. So my answer here is, this is my explicit formula. a sub n is negative one to the n plus one times nine to the n. All right, and this was just check work here, okay? All right, so over on part B, I, I've got two patterns I've gotta pick out. There's a pattern on the numerator and there's a different pattern on the denominator. So let's try and look at our numerator and our denominator separately and see if we can spot the patterns. All right, so in my numerator, I see this number is three to the first, three squared, 
3 cubed, 3 to the 4th. So again, I see this as powers of 3 this time out. And whenever you have a power of 3, your variable is going to be up in your exponent, right? Now, denominators, all right, how do, what's the common way to get 1 to map to 4, 2 to map to 8, 3 to map to 12, 4 to map to 16? All right, well, if I look at this, I'm gaining 4 each time out, right? This is linear growth. So for every 1 unit increase in n, the denominator increased by 4, right? When n jumped from 2 to 3, the denominator jumped by 4 units from 8 to 12. That is linear growth, right? So another way of saying that is my denominator are multiples of 4. All right, so as I start to build my explicit formula, first of all, I need a negative out in front of there because I have negative terms the whole way across. All right, if I want powers of 3, that's going to be 3 to the n. If I want multiples of 4, that's 4n. And when you come up with your formula, check a few of these. I can't tell you how many times I'm off by just a little, like maybe I need to tweak this and make this 3 to the n plus 1 or n minus 1. Just check them. So let's see what a sub 1 would give me. This would be a negative 3 to the 1 over 4 times 1. Well, 3 to the 1 is 3. 4 times 1, 4. Negative 3 4, so that's looking good. Let's try a sub 2. I'll have a negative. We'll have 3 squared over 4 times 2. Well, that is negative 9 8. That's looking pretty good. So I'm feeling pretty solid about that. So we want to get practice under our belts with figuring out, like if I looked at these numbers, could I spot a pattern? And some patterns are easier than others. And then you just become more and more familiar with these patterns. As you start to work these, you start to see, oh, that's powers of 9. Oh, the numerator is powers of 3 multiples of four. They become more and more comfortable and common to us. All right, so with that, we've taken a look at our explicit formulas. We're now gonna switch gears and we're gonna look at recursive formulas. So I'm gonna talk to you about how you can define sequences in terms of a recursive formula. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.